Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about how to set up a Kubernetes cluster by using a Kube ADM tool. Okay, so earlier in our playlist, we talked about how to create a Kubernetes cluster by using a kind tool, right? But that kind cluster, we mostly end up using in our day-to-day uh, -day usage as well as in our um, uh, CI pipelines, continuous integration pipelines in the DevOps where we want to quickly create the cluster, deploy the application, test it, and then destroy the cluster. Okay, so that would be very useful in our day-to-day -day life. But if you talk about the production, okay, if you talk about the production environment, then KubeADM tool or a cluster created by using a KubeADM tool is more preferred because that cluster is persistent and we can use that for longer period of time, okay? Okay, so let's understand what happens or how we create a KubeADM cluster. And I'll also share the step-by-step -step, document in the comment section as well as in the description section. And you guys can follow and set up the KubeADM or uh, Kubernetes cluster by using a KubeADM easily. Perfect. So now, KubeADM is a tool that is used to create a Kubernetes cluster, okay? The important thing that we need to remember here is KubeADM, we mostly use it in the production environment, okay? It's where you will have uh, multiple machines. Okay? We'll have uh, multiple machines. And those by using those machine, we want to basically set up a Kubernetes cluster where maybe you might want to have one master node and then you can create as many as worker node that you want. Okay. Now setting up a KubeADM cluster is very straightforward. What we need to do is uh, there are some prerequisite or some tools to be uh, installed before we do anything. Okay. So the first is uh, basically you should have a container D. Okay. There is something called as a container D runtime that should be installed on both master as well as worker node. Okay. So this is the first step. Install container D, then kubelet cube ADM, okay? So these are the basically three tools we should have installed on all the, all the nodes, master as well as worker node, okay? And then for accessing purpose, okay, accessing your cluster, you have to install a cube CTL utility somewhere on one of the node, okay? Through which we can interact with the Kubernetes cluster specifically the API server, okay? So you can install this kubectl somewhere, okay? Preferably a master node, okay? But these three utilities should be there on each of the node. Now, once that is done, the next step is basically <clears throat> setting up the master node. So what we need to do is we have to run a command. Let me use a different color here. So we should run a cube adm init command on the master node. So when we run the cube adm command, init command, internally it will initialize all the master node components like your API server, your etcd, your controller, your scheduler. So all this will be initialized when we run the cube adm init command. Once this cube adm command uh, init command is successful, at the end, it will give you basically uh, a ready-made join command, which we have to copy, okay? So it will give you the join command that we have to copy and run it on all the worker node, okay? Once that is done, our cluster is, cluster setup is done. But apart from this, we have to do one more step that is, installing the CNI plugin for networking purpose, okay? So there are multiple CNI plugins are available, okay? The most popular are Calico, okay? Then there is something called as a Flannel and then the third one called as a, a View Network, okay? So any of this uh, plugin uh, links are available on their official websites. 
So we have to just copy that link and install. We have to run the kubectl apply command with that link. So that will set up all the networking stuff required and we are done. Our setup would be ready. Okay, so this is how simply you can create a kubeadm cluster, but there are some important thing we have to remember before we actually start setting up the cluster. First, all this machine should be in a same network so that they can reach to each other. Okay, especially between a master and a worker nodes. Okay, so every worker node should be uh, reachable to the master and vice versa. And then the another important requirement, it is recommended, not a compulsion that it's a better to have a, some meaningful host name to each of this node so that we can easily understand that, okay, this is a master node, this is a worker one, worker two, worker three, like this. That will help us basically easily identify. So this it would be better to have some meaningful host name to each of them. Okay, so that's what we need to do it. That's how simply we can set up a cluster. So I have a proper document on that, how to do it. Okay, I'm going to share this document in the description. Okay, so here you can see uh, to set up this, we have to first of all have this all these tools installed on each of the node. And these are the steps that we need to do. Like first, we need to set up the host name for each machine, then set up the master node and then set up the worker node. So what I'm doing, we are basically just setting up the host name for master node, then setting up. So we have basically in this document, we have explained how to set up a Kubernetes cluster for three nodes. So this is uh, to set up a master node host name. Then uh, this is to set up a host name for worker one. Then this is for worker two. Then on the master node, we have to run the kubedm init command. Okay, that will set up all the master node components. Once that is successful, what we need, what happens is basically it uh, creates one config file. Okay, that usually is there in the etc Kubernetes admin.com. Okay, but uh, when we want to uh, access your Kubernetes cluster by using a kubectl, so kubectl needs to know that configuration so that it can interact with the API server. So what we are doing, we are creating by default, kubectl looks for that configuration under .kube folder in the home directory. So that's why we are creating that folder. And then we are copying this etc Kubernetes config file into this home location and then changing the permission. And we are giving the permission to that user. Once that is done, what we can do is, uh, so and the once kubectl uh, edm init successful, we get a ready-made join command, okay? And this join command, we have to go and run it on all the worker node, okay? So either you can copy this or we have some commands to basically generate that token and run it again, okay? So I'll show you. So you can see we are running this command. Once that is done, uh, we have to install a CNI plugin, right? So we have uh, to install a Calico plugin. This is how we do it, okay? Once that is done, uh, you can see right now uh, it is showing only one node because only master node, we executed everything. Once that is done to uh, first generate a token, okay, or the join, join command, okay? So if you run this command, UVDM token create print join command, it will generate a join command. And we have to just copy that join command and run it on all the worker nodes. And that's it. Once that is done, after the, at the end, once all the nodes are all, if you run the join command on all the worker nodes, if you come back to the master node and say kubectl get node, this is how it will show all the nodes and they should be in a ready state, okay? So that's how simply you can basically set up a Kubernetes cluster by using a kubeadm. And this is very popular tool to set up a Kubernetes cluster on the production environment, okay? And if you are using Kubernetes for in your dev environment or in your continuous integration pipelines, then kind is the best option because we can quickly set up a kind cluster on a single node itself, okay? But for a kubeadm, we need multiple machines, okay? So that's it for this video. I hope everyone understood how to set up a Kubernetes cluster by using a kubeadm. If you have any queries, please write it in the comment box. And if you like the video, please subscribe the channel if you are not done yet. Okay, so that's it. Thanks everyone.